Now that we have found the displacement function of a beam element, let's move on to find its stiffest matrix. So we define this third order polynomial for the displacement function of a beam, and we found C1, C2, C3, and C4 coefficients. And we also had these equations, m is equal to ei, or m is equal to ei times the second derivative of v, displacement function, with respect to x, which is equal to ei times 6c1x plus 2c2. And then shear forces, or v, is equal to ei times third derivative of v with respect to x, which gives me ei times dc1, or 6c1. And then I also had c1 and c2 in terms of d1y, d2y, phi1z, and phi2z. That would be placed here, here, and here. Now, M and V would give me the moments and the forces, or the shear forces, at each node, respectively. So what these two equations mean is that I can find the relationship between moments and the phi's, let me just write that, and as well as forces and the D's, and displacements, basically. So at x equals 0, v naught is equal to f1y and it's equal to ei times c1 or 6c1 plus uh, or basically just c1, 6c1 that we found from this equation, right? So ei times 6c1, place it in here and vl is equal to minus f2y1 and that's because F2y is in that direction, in the positive y direction, whereas V2 is in the negative direction. That's why we put that negative sign there, and what that means is that negative F2y is equal to EI times 6C1. Again, this is EI times 6C1. Now we have to apply the moments as well. So if I go back, the moment is a little bit more complicated. It has 6C1x plus 2c2. If I put x equals 0, this one will be cancelled out. I only have 2c2. So if I take a look at there, m0 would be equal to minus m1z. Again, here is uh, counterclockwise, which is positive, but m1 is clockwise. It's negative. Positive, negative. So we have this negative sign in here. And it becomes it equal to ei times 6c1 times 0, that becomes 0, and 2 times this is c2 from the displacement function. Now if I put l instead of x in that equation, m2 becomes this, ei times 6c1 plus 2c2. And because here m2 is positive, because it's counterclockwise, and m2 is positive here as well, we have the positive sign. These equations look very overwhelming, but we can rearrange them and write them like this. Now f1y becomes this equation with respect to, or uh, as a function of d1y, phi1z, d2y, and phi2z. And same is true for m1z, phi2y, and m2z. So we found these long and overwhelming equations by inserting x values and displacement function and found these rearranged nice looking equations that would relate the forces these are nodal forces here to nodal displacements d1y phi1z d2y and phi2z now we can write this in terms of a matrix if we rearrange that into a uh, vector format for the forces, so this is the nodal forces again, and we rearrange the displacements like this for nodal displacements, we can write this equation or this matrix. 12 is the, co the coefficient of d1y for f1y. 6L is the coefficient of D1, phi1z, minus 12 is the coefficient of D2y, 
and 6L is the coefficient of phi to z. And if you multiply this row with the vector, it gives you f1, y. If you multiply the second row of this matrix with this vector, it gives you m1, z, so on and so forth. And this is the stiffest matrix of a beam element in local coordinate system. However, we usually write the local and global coordinate system of a beam in the same direction. So let me change the color of my pen to draw two different coordinate systems. Let's assume that this is the local coordinate system. And also let's draw the Y for that. I can also draw the global current system. Let's draw it with green or this darker blue and put it exactly here. So this is Y and this is X. If that is happening, then I can write that the local coordinates or local stiffest matrix of a beam element is equal to its global stiffest matrix. However, if like a truss element, they were different in with an angle theta, then I would have to find the transformation matrix and find the stiffest matrix in the new global coordinate system. So we found the stiffest matrix of a beam. We can move on to solve some problems with this.